basically you can see we've got three variables, three equations. We want to find out what x, y, and z are. And you probably learned a lot of other techniques like the elimination method and you know the graphing method and substitution method. But now what we're doing is we're going to write this as an augmented matrix. And what that means is I'm just using the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, but I'm also adding on these solutions here on the right. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just writing down the coefficients. 3x is 3, 1y is 1, negative 1z is negative 1, and the answer is 4. Okay, And this is our augmented matrix. Now remember, you can interchange okay, any two rows. Okay, So you're going to you know, switch them. You can multiply any row by a constant multiple, as long as it's not 0. So you multiply through by 2 or 10, like that. And you can add any row to any other row. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by trying to get zero in this lower left-hand corner. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply uh, negative three times row two, and I'm going to add it to row three, and I'm going to put the answer in row three. Now, it's good to write down, you know, what you're doing in case you want to go back and check your work, in case you made a mistake, or you just want to review, you know, what you did. So that's why I'm doing that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, we know that the first row is not changing, so I'm just going to rewrite that. Okay, and we know that the second row is not going to be changing, but the third row is. So we're taking negative 3 times row 2 plus row 3, that's 0. So negative 3, that gives you 3, plus 1 is 4. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus negative 1 is negative 7. Negative 18 plus uh, 4 is negative 14. Okay, great. So now we've got 0 in this lower left-hand corner. Now, just to tell you where we're heading with all this, what we really want is we want... 0 here, 0 here, 0 here. We want 1's on the diagonal, and we want zeros here. And what we want is that we want our answers right there. So this way, we're going to be all done. We're going to have z is equal to blank, right? y is equal to blank, and x is equal to blank. Now, if you want to see this on the calculator, I'll show you at the end of this video how you can do this row reduced echelon form using your TI-83 or TI-84. So stay tuned if you're interested in uh, seeing how I do that to check your answer or just to do it in a quicker fashion. But let's go ahead. We're going to go through two examples. This first example, we've already got zero here. Okay, so we're looking good. Now we want to get zero here, okay, in this position. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply negative one times row one. I'm going to add it to row two, and I'm going to put the answer in row two. Okay, so if I do that, let's see. So this uh, top row is really going to stay the same. The bottom row is really going to stay the same. So I'm just copying those down. And you want to be careful. You don't make little arithmetic errors. Okay, so negative 1 plus 1 gives us 0. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2. Okay, so now you can see we've got zeros here and here. Now I want to get 0 here. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to combine the second and the third rows together. So we're going to do, let's see, we're going to do 2 times row 2 plus row 3, and we're going to put the answer in row 3. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So we've got 1, 1, 1, and 4, right? And let's see, the, this second row is also going to stay the same, okay? But the bottom row, when we multiply this by 2, this is negative 4 plus 4 is 0. This is going to be 2 times 1 is 2 plus negative 7 is negative 5. 2 times 2 is 4 plus negative 14 is negative 10. And we got it. So now you can see we've got zeros in this lower left-hand corner. What we really want now is to get zeros here and as well as ones on the diagonal. So let's uh, be strategic here. Let's go ahead and multiply this third row by negative 1 fifth. So negative 1 fifth times row 3, answer in row 3. So if we do that, uh, let's see what's that going to give us. Let me move over here so I have a little bit more space. Okay, so what we have is 0, 0, 1, and 2. All right, so that's good. So you can see that z is equal to, to 2. Um, so let's go ahead and copy down what else we have left. We have 0, negative 2, 1, and 2. And we also have 1, 1, 1, and 4. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to try to get 0. Uh, I think I'm going to try to get 0. Well, I'm going to go 0 right for this one here. I think that's going to be the easiest. So let's go ahead and multiply. Uh, let's see. We're going to do um, 2 times row 1 plus row 2. Answer is going to go in row 1. Okay, so if we do that, let's see. What does that give us? This is 0, 0, 1, 2. This one stays the same. Uh, this one's going to stay the same. 0, negative 2, 1, and 2. But here, negative, uh, let's see, 2 times row 1 plus row 2, that's going to give us a 2 there. 
Uh, let's see, this is going to be 2 plus negative 2 is 0 there. That's going to give us 2 plus 1 is 3 there. And this is 8 plus uh, 2, which is going to give us 10 there. Now, it kind of seems like we took a step backwards because now we have a 2 here. We really want a 1 here. But you'll see how this works out. So the next thing is we want to combine, let's say we want to go for uh, 0 in this spot right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the second and the third, I'm sorry, the second and the first together. So that's going to be negative 3 times, uh, let's see, negative 3 times, oh, I, I said that wrong. Let's do that. Let's combine this uh, third row with the first row. So we're going to do negative 3 times row 3 plus row 1, answer in row 1. Now you want to be careful, you know, that you don't undo the work that you did, right? So that's why I'm being strategic. I basically said, uh, you know, let's combine this third row with the second row because you can see there's zeros here already so when we add it it's not going to you know put it back a constant here it's not going to put a constant okay besides zero so let's look, go ahead and do that so we've got negative three times uh, row three we're going to add it to row one okay so let's go ahead and do that so what does that give us that gives us uh, let's see we've got two zero uh, zero and this is, let's see, negative 6 plus 10, which is 4. Okay, so that's, that's looking good. And the rest we're just going to copy down as they were. Okay, so 0, 0, 1, and 2. And then now we're going to try to get 0 here in this spot. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply uh, negative 2 times row 3. Did I say negative 2? <laughs> negative 1 times row 3 plus row 2, answer in row 2. Okay, so you're with me so far? So that way, if this is negative 1, and we add it to this one, that's going to make this 0. Okay, so if we go ahead and do that, let's see what we get. We get 0, we get 0. I'm going to switch back to this, easier for me to write from this side. So 0, 1, 2. And then we've got, let's see, this is going to be negative 1 times 1 is going to give us, um, that's going to be 0 here. Negative 2 plus 2 is going to give you uh, 0 here. Um, negative 1, that's going to give you negative 2, 0. And then the top row is the same. Okay, so if you're with me so far, okay, you can see we've gotten zeros in the upper right-hand corner. We've got zeros in the lower left-hand corner. Now all we want is ones on the diagonal, like so. Okay, so the way we do that is we're going to multiply uh, row 2 times negative 1 half and put the answer back into row 2, and we're going to multiply the top row, row 1, times a half, and the answer is going to go in row 1. So if we do that, let's see, running out of some space here, but let's see, it's going to be right here. We've got... 1, 0, 0, and 2. Okay, this one's going to be 0, uh, 1, 0, 0. And this one's going to be 0, 0, 1, 2. So now, it seemed like it took a lot more work than when you just do the Gaussian elimination with back substitution. But now you're done, because you can see that z is equal to 2, y is equal to 0, and x is equal to 2. So our answer is going to be 2, 0, 2. If you want to check your answer, you just go ahead and put those values back in for x, y, and z and make sure that it makes all these equations 